God. You won't be able to fall asleep in this one. If you, if you do, I'll just stop and forward. <laughs> it's bad when it gets you. Have you guys been doing night duty or something? <laughs> just doing a lot. I say getting tired's progressive for me now. I used to like recover every 24 hours. Now it's like years of it catching up on me. Folks, thanks for coming along this afternoon. I'm going to have a prayer with you. And I want to talk about um, some missional direction and things that are happening in our conference. And we've got some bigger things about to break forth, but we'll go and talk about that all week. Let's just bow our heads together. Father, uh, as we reflect on how to reach the world, we're running out of time. There's such serious things going on on planet Earth. So, Father... As we share this afternoon, just inspire us on what each of us can do differently or better or just more of. Direct our prayers. Uh, we trust it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So the, the uh, direction of the conference, what do we, we use a couple of words to do that. We are, what are we? We're solid, not fancy. And James, are you able to project that up on the screen? Just, just when you can. Um, this is the first phase. There's two other phases that I'm not telling anyone. You're a special group of people. Special group. There's a next two parts of it. The second part of it is to create more workers in the field, triple and quadruple, and there are ooples we can get to get more people working in mission. Because one thing I've become deeply convicted about, one-on-one -on -one is what God is using right now in Australia. The age of the big program, the age of the program in general has passed us by. What is going gangbusters is when you're doing networking and getting Bible studies one-on-one. -on -one. It's unbelievable. So as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 8, the, la the fields are ripe. And how does he finish the verse? The laborers are few. That's the second phase. And I, I said this morning, we were gifted... $50,000 American from a donor for South New South Wales to get more Bible workers. Um, in this coming week leading up to Sabbath, there's a condition on the 50000 that I didn't want to tell you about this morning. Do you know what the condition is? We have to match it dollar for dollar with donations from... He's a very wealthy guy. He said there's more from where that came from. But the condition on it is we match it dollar for dollar. So every dollar we raise at camp coming up to this coming offering, he's going to match it dollar for dollar and he may actually go well in excess of that 50. But let's, let's try. 50,000 American and 76,000 Australian. That's a lot of room in Bible worker land. Uh, Pastor Phil, Pastor Phil Yates, why don't you come up with me here? Pastor Phil's area mentor in the highlands down to the coast. Uh, oh, you're covering Western Plains too. Hey, Shari. We're going to start with the Western Plains. What we're going to do is just go around. Um, Pastor Roger's just been at a baptism, so he's on his way back. We're going to go around the conference. We'll just tell you some stories about what's going on as far as the Bible workers, some of the Bible workers working in the field now and how much of an impact they're making. Here in South New South Wales. I'm going to ask Pastor Shari, Brendan. Well, you'll introduce me. Pastor Shari is a phenomenal pastor up there in Bathurst, just doing an amazing job. Um, 
I went to a business meeting with the other day, or board meeting the other day, and my goodness, I, yeah, very solid leader, awesome um, authority. Um, I'm over there at the the youth tent getting told what to do. So it's um, Pastor Shari, I'm a bit afraid of you actually. I'm just going to let you do your thing. Phil and I go way back. <laughs> um, so I have been uh, at Bathurst and Men Jerma churches. Well, this is my second year, um, second year as a, a church pastor as well. So. Uh, I want to thank my church family. They've been very gracious and patient with me, uh, but I've also been blessed when I stepped into the role that the church was currently employing a a one-day-a-week Bible worker, so paying for it. Um, We have a special Bible working fund where we pay for a Bible worker, and the first Bible worker that was already in action when I came was Pastor Abel, and he's now a full-time pastor in Griffith and... um, yeah, Pastor Abe was incredible at connecting with the community and um, doing Bible studies. And he actually um, was, he really mentored me a lot in, in what it is that a pastor does and, and how to encourage, you know, your church. And so Pastor Abel left, he got the call to Griffith. And so we were praying as a church, oh, you know, what, what do we do now? Who are we going to get as a Bible worker? And we haven't an awesome young man at our church named Brendan, and I'm going to tell him to come on up. Come on up, Brendan. I might grab that mic, Phil. So Brendan is um, our current Bible worker, and he's one day a week, so he works full-time during the week, and then he has Friday off, and so we get to hang out on Friday. We've been doing lots of different things, Um, ranges from cleaning up the church, to doing Bible studies. Uh, we've been doing some food pantry drops as well. And uh, maybe if you want to tell everyone about our experience a couple of weeks ago when we were dropping off some food in the community. Yep, so a few weeks ago we uh, travelled out to Manjuruma, Mishari and I, and we were just doing the sort of the routine drop-off. shari has got the usual contacts out there. Uh, we go into the town and have four houses in a row and each person comes out to the car and they grab a bag, they'll um, get the food that they want and they're just so excited just to see their faces. They're, they're eating well that night, they're really happy. And um, we actually went out to another lady's house, she's an elderly lady. Uh, we knocked on the door and went inside, just the usual thing. Um, but when we got inside she had, heart was racing really fast and she was quite, quite nervous and not sure what to do. And um, so we got in contact with uh, her neighbour, who she trusts, and um, yeah, we were able to get her actually to the um, Blaney Hospital. And um, if we hadn't have been there, no one might have checked on her, and she might not have been able to get to the hospital where she needed to go. So it was really good to just go in a really small community, um, not many people there, and um, see what we can do there. And that's one thing we found in our country communities, is a lot of people that live alone, and they're, they're quite lonely. And from our food drop-offs, it's really an opportunity to get to know people. And we've had um, a couple of our community members join, like, our Bible study uh, with our little men, Jerema Church. And so it's just a blessing to meet people, to give them food, see where they're at, have a chat, and then, you know, these questions just come out. Um, And do you want to tell us about um, Mina and Sophia as well? Yep, so um, we've got two young ladies, Mina and Sophia, um, attend our church, and they're contacts through the uni at Bathurst. They're both uh, studying up there. Uh, One of our church members was delivering food um, to some other people and got in contact with um, girl Mina, and she grew up Adventist, but she sort of drifted away, and um, yeah, she's sort of ready to come back, so she came to... Um, our Wednesday night Bible study a couple of times, come to church on Saturdays, and um, yeah, she's a valuable member of our youth, and um, now just last Tuesday evening, before we come to camp, uh, we started uh, just the first Bible study with her and yeah, Sophia, who's her friend at uni, um, she's excited to come along, and they've been really enjoying our Wednesday night Bible studies, um, it's great to have the youth go to the Bible study, so yeah, just done the first one this last Tuesday evening. 
And I might just add to that, I couldn't do the Bible study because I had to come to camp to set up. Thanks, Justin. And <laughs> so I said, no, I asked Brendan, I'm like, are you able to do this Bible study? Because, you know, I'm not able to do it. And yeah, to have, um, to have a Bible work or to have church, church members that are active and want to get involved, like there's nothing better um, as a pastor to have a team. Um, and so look forward to growing our team, eh, Brendan? Yes. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much. We'll move straight to the Highlands. Uh, I'd invite Pastor Houston up. Houston joined us. When did you join us, mate? Last year. Started last year. Yeah, okay. And uh, you started where? Where are you at the moment? In Canberra. Uh, specifically Queanbeyan and Charnwood. Okay, Charnwood. What's that? That's a, that's a new name. <laughs> Charnwood Adventist Church, is it? Charnwood Seventh Day Adventist Church. Has yes. anyone heard of Charnwood Adventist Church in, in Canberra? I've heard of South Canberra and National, but not Charnwood. So, what is this? It's a church plant, oh, well. but very, you know, specifically where it would just become a company. So, praise the Lord. Things are moving. So, Houston and I work together. I help him, you know, well, he helps me mostly, but we, we work together and. Um, he started off and, he, and he, he's going around, very missional, goes around, he's got about eight Bible studies, then nine, then ten, then he got to twelve, now he's, what are you, how many Bible studies you got, around forty? Yeah, just under forty, thirty. So at, at forty Bible studies, when you're visiting, you're visiting, yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. When you're visiting uh, a lot of people uh, in your churches, you've got two churches, you visit, you do board meetings, you've got to spend time with your new you know, child of Judah and your wife, Rochelle, mm. it's hard. Mm. So what do you need? Bible workers. <laughs> Enter <laughs> Evelyn. Hey, 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 there we go. Good question. Yeah, so um, I started out as a Bible worker back in 2019. Justin gave me a job at Canberra National Church. Uh, I went to do a rise first, then I came to Canberra, and that was a huge blessing. I learned so much. And that was really out of, you know, I had this huge desire to lead someone to Jesus, yep. and um, I just bumped into Justin at, at Canberra there one time, and he said, hey, come and, come and work with us, and it's one of the, well, yeah, one of the best things that I've ever done. You will see a bit of a theme in this conference, and that, that theme is able, Bible worker, pastor. Brendan, <laughs> Bible worker. <laughs> And Houston, well, there's a lot of people who go from Bible worker to pastor. Evelina, come up front. We are uh, so blessed in Canberra, aren't we? Yeah, amen. Have Eva. Yeah, and this... <laughs> I'll give the mic and you you got one minute. Yeah, right. Well, just to add on to that point, like being a pastor was never part of my plan. I never thought I'd be here. But um, yeah, through God's, um, God's grace, praise the Lord, I'm here. And this year we've got Evelina here. She's all the way from Finland, um, but she's married Kyle and uh, they come down from Moolambar. And it's really awesome to have Evelina working with us in Charnwood. And already she has made a huge impact uh, to our church and, and helped with taking uh, some of the load off me as a pastor. But um, yeah, Evelina, just share, I guess, a little bit about what we've been doing since you've began when was it? Start of February? February? Yeah. February. Uh, so we've been mostly doing Bible studies, and we have, um, it's new experience for me. I just find that there's so many people in Canberra who are uh, seeking God and wanting to find God, and they just seem to come out of nowhere. Yeah. Or oh, God is bringing those people. So yeah. it's really, really awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And what's the um, the method of how we find Bible studies? What are we are we door knocking or like? No, like connecting and like through already the contacts that we have, they might have family members or friends and just yeah meeting people. And there's also people who are coming to our church who are not uh, yeah. Adventist or baptized, and so we just connect with them and um, yeah being friends with them and yeah. No, that's awesome, and I set her up for that question because um, when before Evelina started, I was talking to her on the phone, 
and I, you know, asked her, so what kind of things have you been doing at your church in Moolamba? And she said, you know, mostly door knocking, did a few different little programs here and there. And then she said, so, you know, what do you do for your method of finding people to study with? And I said, well, we don't do any of that. We don't do any door knocking or programs like that. And we literally just uh, network through our church community, friendship evangelism. And I could hear in her voice, she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Almost like she didn't believe that this would work. And um, about a month in, you know, Evelina was, she had a few Bible studies and she's like, you know, I want to do more though. I'm, I don't feel, I feel bad that I'm not working enough. And uh, I said, well, if you're really desperate, you can go letterboxing for Faith FM, but just be patient, that will come. Mm. And about two weeks later, I checked in with Evelina. I said, how are you going? You're still feeling like you're not doing it? No, no, no. I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I've got enough going on at the moment. So um, it's been really awesome just to see that uh, in such a short amount of time, the amount of people that we're finding who are really seeking. And that's one thing that I will just put an emphasis on is that when we meet, we meet four times a week in the mornings at the conference office. And a lot of the time we just spend in prayer, praying for seekers, divine appointments, and yeah, people who are really wanting to know Jesus. And Honestly, some weeks there we get two, sometimes three people per week who are wanting to do Bible studies or wanting to get baptized. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. And so we were having the conversation like two weeks before camp started. We need, we need another Bible worker mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're getting church members engaged and we've got about seven people in our church plant engaged in leading Bible studies. And that's awesome, but we need more. <laughs> we need more workers, and, and having another Bible worker would be amazing. So, yeah, praise the Lord. God's good, and he's bringing people to us. And, um, yeah, I don't know what else. Good. Thank you so much, guys. The, um, the main thing is, look, we want to be solid, not fancy. And this really drills down a lot of people in the church don't have a lot of time. Um, and we need workers on the ground that are dedicated full-time to actually doing the work. And I, I said to my church in South Canberra when I was an intern under Justin's brilliant guide, guidance that if you can't afford to spend the time, then spend the money. Now, I know people aren't, aren't, aren't rich and they're not, you know, increased, but if you are increased with goods, if you can't spend the time doing the Bible study enable someone else to do to spend the time doing Bible studies. We need to get the work finished and uh, there are so many people out there we're finding that really are seeking God in a real way. Um, yeah, so fulfilling that Bible study thing is, is, is the key. I can't see, oh, I had one more pastor but I don't think he's here so I'll call Rog up and tell us about Riverina. Thank you, Phil. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. That's much better. I know we've all had lunch and we're winding down, but hey, we've got something exciting that we, ha we can be excited about. You know, being solid, not fancy, it's, it's, it's something I'm prepared to die on that hill. I'm prepared to die on that hill because... We've done. We've run programs. We've done. We've done the you know food pantries, and they're not bad things. We've done all these things that in, in the community. They're not. They're not bad things. But let me tell you, in my very short and ex short experience in ministry, have not been able to save one soul. Up until we prayed. Church, do you believe in prayer? Prayer works. Let me show you how this works. Me and mother, me and uh, Ethan, we were sitting there doing Bible studies in an RSL. You know, we were sharing the Word of God and teaching him, and he, and he, he taps me in the shoulder and says, "Rog, I want to know how to give Bible studies. Can, can, how do we find contacts?" Well, brother, let's pray. Prayed for. I said, "Simple prayer. Lord, send us a contact we can study with." Amen. Open our eyes, the waiter walks over. 
and says, I noticed you two are doing Bible studies. Could I please study? <laughs> Prayer works. Prayer works. So solid knot. Fancy. Let me call up my pastors, uh, Pastor Tom and Pastor Abel. Could you please come on up? So um, I, get, I get the privilege. Um, I'm humbled that I am uh, an area mentor for the, for the Riverina. So I get to look after the boys or the men in the river. And we'll, we'll, we'll wait for him to come. Um, pastor Abel will join us soon. He's the pastor out in Griffith. But to my left here is Pastor Tom. Um, he's come by answer to prayer again. And, and we'll continue to repeat this because prayer works, family. You know, we, we were praying for someone to come in and, and pass the Wagga and look after Kudamundra and Tamora. And we had names, a list of names we were going through. It's like, surely this person would be suitable. You know, the Samuel, where he walks into Jesse's house and he starts listing off, like, surely it's this guy. And we had a whole list of names. They all fell through. So we decided to pray more. And next day, was it a Thursday, Tom? Thursday prayer, Friday call. He called in on Friday and asked Job, is there any opening? And that, we couldn't have done that ourselves. God did that. So God does the fancy. We just got to stay solid in prayer. Would you say amen? All right. So Tom, uh, tell me. Tell me. What, what's happening in Wagga and, and how are you going in Wagga, actually? How are you going in Wagga first? And then tell me what's happening in Wagga. Yeah, uh, I'm loving Wagga. It was a blessing to arrive there. Um, is that okay if I just give a little bit of background yeah, give, before give coming? give the bra- background, the context, <laughs> yeah. all of it. So um, my name's Tom Kent, for those of you who may not know. Uh, and I went through uh, a rise in 2017. And since that time, I've been pretty much Bible working. Bible worked on and off for four years and then Bible worked in a school as a chaplain for the past three years. And my wife and I, uh, we actually Bible worked together at the the school there as chaplains and uh, she also did a little bit of teaching. But we had had thought that that was what we were going to do. And then a crazy thing happened is we were looking for a a bigger house because we were about to have a baby actually. Uh, next month is Jer, it's a little girl, and we're very excited about that. I uh, just thought I'd add that in there. <laughs> uh, we've got to make disciples, so. Um, but okay, we were looking for a house, and all of our house options fell through, fell through, fell through. And um, it was that Thursday night that my wife and I, everything kind of came to nothing, and we were just like, oh, man, this is really... We thought that God was leading for us to continue building momentum at the school, and um, yeah, it was the next day, that's right, mm. that uh, we, just, we prayed and we thought, man, maybe God wants us to move down south, it's closer to Tanisha's parents, uh, I'll just call Justin and see if there's any Bible work openings or anything. And um, then everything else happened. But loving being at Wagga, been there since um, the start of this year, and it's been a blessing because I've personally felt that I've been welcomed into a family at Wagga. Mm. Um, we, we see each other as family, and uh, it's been such a blessing, and I've found so much support um, in your leadership, Roger, working with you there for the few months, which has been a huge blessing, uh, but also the church family has just been an absolute blessing, and I, yeah, I can't praise the Lord enough for the blessing that they are to uh, our family and um, the support that they're giving us in preparation for our little one as well. So, Tom, tell me what's... what's Something exciting that's recently happening oh. uh, that, that Wagga is in discussion of. Yeah, so Wagga Church has been praying for a number of years about what to do with uh, this school building at the back of their church facility. And um, they, they, they wanted to use it for mission, they wanted to use it for God, they wanted to um, be able to use it as a facility because it was kind of just sitting there at the back and... Um, that prayer kind of kept going this year and we'd, we were praying about it. And then I think a few, I think it was the first board meeting of the year, we had talked about, man, we, let's, let's plan for the next board meeting that we're actually going to walk around and pray and talk together about what we're actually going to do with this school building. Uh, and in the meantime, 
all these things fell into place uh, with regards to what God was originally planning for uh, that school building. And so at the recent board meeting, just this past Tuesday that has passed, um, the church uh, board uh, voted to uh, seek uh, help with the conference to be able to use the school building as a facility specifically uh, for accommodation for Bible workers. And so uh, we looked into that, and um, that's very exciting. Uh, the main purpose, I guess, that as a church, we uh, saw that as something that God was leading is we see it as helping the South New South Wales Conference mission. Uh, we see it as something that uh, is not a selfish thing, but rather can be a benefit for churches in need in our conference to send out Bible workers. Uh, because that, if we use that building for accommodation, uh, it can be used whether we, wherever a Bible college may start or a field Bible college to be able to source Bible workers to different towns, different cities, and to be able to send out more, which is just exciting, super exciting. So, Tom, Bible workers yeah. being accommodated for. Bible workers don't struggle with passion to go and share the Word of God, is that right? Say again, sorry. Bible workers don't struggle with passion to go and share the Word of God, right? And they want to share it. They right? want to share it, yeah. But what they do struggle with is accommodation. And praise God that the Wagga Church and leaders have been able to pray, seek the will of God, and the will of God is to accommodate those who are passionate in sharing the Word of God. Mm. And this is not going to help just Wagga. It's not just going to help the Riverina. It's going to help South New South Wales right. put labourers out in the field because the harvest is plentiful. Mm. The harvest is plentiful. But we need, we need more labourers and we need to be able to help these labourers by accommodating them. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, praise God, Tom. Yeah, um, praise God for you and the, the leaders there in Wagga. Um, very blessed to have you as a part of our team, and uh, looking forward to see how God continues to work in that space. Excited to see how God leads. Yeah. Blessings. Uh, to my right here, um, he's not only uh, the pastor out in Griffith, but also my brother, uh, Pastor Abel. And um, Abel, introduce yourself. Just what are you doing out in Griffith? Uh, you're not doing anything with the Italian Mafia out there? Or? Um, yeah, my name is Abel Afele. I am the youngest brother of Roger, but also the handsome uh, side. I don't know what happened to him, but... Uh... Give me the mic. <laughs> nah, you know, it's been a blessing uh, going down to Griffith. Um, we call it G-Town. I call it G-Town. Um, I love the name G-Town, and we have a hashtag called G-Town Rebuild. Um, because we understand that the Israelites had certain season and certain phases within their journey. G-Town is in their certain phase and season that we're rebuilding those walls, those Jericho walls. And the amazing thing is what's happening in there is our vision for this year is be a disciple, make a disciple. Because we can baptize and baptize so many people, but if we're not making disciples, we're not duplicating the kingdom, spreading the gospel. So about within our um, region, uh, I've been uh, discipling my elders, and that's my main focus, discipling my leaders. And within discipling my leaders, my elders, we have come about 140 um, Bible studies. But mind you, in the context that we're living in, there's so much uh, busyness with work and everything around us. And we're pushing to try and find more Bible workers, 140 Bible studies. It's hard to Do try. Do I have and... an amen for that church? Amen. 140 so, in Griffith alone. So we have uh, we have one of my elders, who's um, he has a uh, we call it, he calls it small group, but within his small group is 90 people that he's looking after. So I've actually taken this elder and discipled another team that would help him so that they can disciple all this 90 and 
break it into small groups, smaller groups, so that they can be disciples and that they make more disciples. The success is not about baptizing the person. The success is about making a disciple and that disciple making another disciple Preach. for the kingdom. And we're looking at pushing at 40 baptisms this July. So I, please, if you can pray for our, our baptismal candidates. Um, and and it's, it's not about the baptism, it's not about the numbers. Like I said, it's about interceding, God interceding in their journey, but also investing in them, empowering them to be that disciple so that be, they be empowered to make more disciples for the kingdom. Because we have come to the reality that the world uh, that we're living in, and we call it by its name, it's sin. But we have to uh, be in a way that we have to be a disciple. I have to be a disciple first so I can make disciples within my elders and that my elders make disciples and it just goes on and on and on. And so much that the gospel was spread so much faster than just looking for numbers and then back door they go again. And that's the syndrome that we're, we're facing with today. We're, we're chasing numbers, but we're not about being fancy. We're about being solid within this conference. So that's the amazing opportunity. That's the amazing blessings that um, it's happening in G-Town. But also I ha actually have a, um, another pastor that's working with me is Pastor Alan. He's not here. And big ups to Alan. We have been working together, and it's been amazing working together with Alan. Um, Alan has been a uh, massive contribution to um, G-Town and rebuilding the walls again. So that's uh, what's happening out at G-Town. Uh, please keep us in prayer. Um, and it's funny, I'll just share a story. I, I started my board meeting. And I said, uh, um, first question, I said, all right, members of the board, here's my first question. Who is the uh, mafia boss? And they all looked at me. <laughs> what? Is this guy serious? Is this person serious? He's come in. Who's the mafia boss? And I said, there's a reason why I asked for the mafia boss. Because if we can change the heart of the mafia boss, he will change his whole entire family. Why? Because they all listen to the mafia boss. But it's not about changing him in a way that we have to be strategic in making him a disciple, changing his life, imagine it, it duplicating down the line of his whole family. Hmm. And making a difference. That's what we have to make an influence. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm passionate about it and it's amazing. And I just praise God that we landed in G-Town and that we're seeing God move because at the end of the day, it's not me, it's not the elders, it's not anyone else in G-Town, but it's God alone. And praise to Him. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Abel. Um, and that's just Wagga, Griffith. And that's not even tapping into Border Christian College. Uh, Aquaman's not here. We call him Aquaman because he spends more time in the water than he does on land, uh, which is where we've come from. We come from a baptism that was just down the road. It happened at 2.30, baptized Four people. So uh, his name's Pastor Cedric Pinata, um, and he does an awesome job down at BCC, uh, Border Christian College, which is the church of the school. Uh, yeah, there's a school of the church, other way around. Um, and he's got Bible studies, multiple Bible studies that even he can't keep up with. And so that's Bible studies there. You've got Pastor Ben, Pastor Toby. Uh, who are doing an amazing job down in Wodonga and Aubrey. Again, we need the help. And the harvest is what? The harvest is what? And the laborers are? And we need your prayers. We need your support because we need Bible. People who are passionate about the Word of God out there in the field to share light and darkness. Would you say amen? So, folks, just, just want to summarise, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I like Evelina's testimony, because I think she came as a doubting Thomas to Canberra about, we don't run programs, and I know this is so hard for us to, and pastors are the worst for it. Everything we do, we've turned into a program. This is not that method. We've chosen stories. There are programs that I've done more programs than most. I love them. But what's really working is just taking someone else with you on a Bible study and they learn how and then that someone 
take someone with them when they go and do one. And where do the Bible studies come from? They are walking through the front door of your church on a Sabbath morning, again and again and again. Uh, I'll start Bible studies with someone. There was a baptism today that I think was connected to the school, that was connected through a spouse. Uh, it's a network. What's working in Australia now, possibly better than ever in its history, is networking. One Bible study, Houston starts off the beginning of this year, he had eight. Now that's become 40. Evelina's joined. She's getting maxed out. They're going to have to get more people, more people, and we want to recruit members, but this is going slow and thorough, but it's faster than taking a shortcut. That the person comes along with them and they learn how to give the study by watching it happen. And after they watch enough and they get confident, they do it while the other person watches. That's the method that God seems to be really blessing at the moment. Hence, I'm reaching out to everyone I know around the world to get money for South New South Wales. And yeah, I don't care where I get it from. Um, uh, Caleb, our treasurer, is a really good guy. I baptised Caleb, so I've got to say good things about him. He's our treasure. He looks at me, I'm always trying to get more. I'm trying to get more workers and we're maxed out on our tithe and I'm not going to do a Barack Obama or a Donald Trump or a Biden and go into deficits. Don't believe in that. We live within our means. So parallel to what we're doing with tithe, we want to build a school. God has opened up a door because this guy is an absolute scholar. Amen. He came through that path himself. We've got the facility. We've got another classroom. We've realised, hey, we can start our own Bible school. So we put through 10... 20 young people through there, so then we send a couple of young people to Naramai that are actually trained, ready to go, and Naramai is going to get the blessing. There's no program involved. It is pure discipleship. When they get there, those two Bible workers, it's not the, oh, we're going to sit back and watch you. Uh-uh. They're going to take church members out with them on the Bible study, and they're going to discover the greatest thing in their life that you have a little part in someone finding Jesus Christ as their saviour. And it's an addiction. Amen. It's an addiction. And when they get confident over six months or whatever it is, they go and take someone else with them. This was the method of the New Testament used by Jesus. He has to save the whole world. What's he do? Spends three years with 12 guys. What a method. Shouldn't you be running some massive big program and getting over to China and all that? Well, ultimately he did through discipling 12, 12 people. Those 12 quickly become 120. They quickly become 3,000, then 5,000, then they stop counting. By the end of the first century, Jesus crucified 31 AD. By the end of the first century, there's a million Christians in the world. Oh, they must have had Facebook. <laughs> How did that happen? That happened the same way that this is happening as you heard these stories today, one person at a time. But it's not addition, it's multiplication. Because we don't just add and then that, that, they're there now, we'll go and get another one. No, they become a part of the workforce. They become a part of going and doing it themselves with someone else, always in pairs, always discipling. It's multiplication, it's not addition. And it might start slow. But let me tell you, when I'm in Canberra, Houston, he's come, I was looking everywhere for them. We baptized 100 people in four years. One of those years is a lockdown COVID year. 
So it was really in three years, a hundred people were baptized in Canberra. How? Was it programs? Uh uh. There were 12. At one point, we had 12 Houstons meeting in the morning with the pastor. What are you doing today? How are you doing it? We were supporting one another. That's how we got it done in the most secular city in Australia. And Canberra is, trust me. Man, you should, I could get you on some Canberra stories. Um, please pray. And we've, we've created a way. I've got to try and match my 50,000 American dollars. That's 76,000. I'm, I'm really hoping the Aussie dollar drops at the moment. <laughs> By the time it hits our bank account. Pray for the, the collapse of the Aussie dollar. No, don't do that. Um, if I can match that in what we can raise, dollar for dollar, I get it all. And he said, there's more, there's more to come. That's a, that's a wow. good start. Now, you might be a battler like me and, and uh, overextend himself by buying patrols and all sorts of silly things. It costs him more money than they should. What we've created is a way that you could just, if you want to contribute $20 a week, we can set a thing up. Uh, Kyle has created that. We're going to hand them out next Sabbath. 20 bucks a week to contribute to a Bible worker. Uh, you don't have to have squillions in the bank or anything like that, but we really want to get this going. We don't want to think, oh, Bible workers are going to finish it. No, -uh. Bible workers are just going to speed this up. So members get the hands-on experience of giving Bible studies, sharing one for another. So every night in the big tent this week, from Sunday through, I'm going to interview a Bible worker. It's not that Bible workers are the be-all and end-all. It's a story about how God's used a young person. I don't know, Tom, what you were doing before you went to Arise. What were you doing? You finished school in Toowoomba? Or? Yeah, I did my first year of chemistry and then dropped out. You dropped out of chemistry? Yeah. Man, you'd probably been making a bit more money if you had stuck with that. Well, the Lord changed my life. But the Lord changed his life. <laughs> and it's not about the money. It's about purpose and meaning. And ultimately, it's about spending your life well. And I know that that's what Tom's chosen to do. We don't care where we get them from. We don't care how old or how young you are. Everyone, if you can read, you can do a Bible study. If you can't read, it is very difficult. But I don't say it's impossible. Um, please pray for this. And please think about the offering that's coming up this next Sabbath. You might be able to contribute $20 a week. Well, praise God, they add up. They add up. We, these guys are cheap to employ. We don't give them much. Um, but we need to have them accommodated. That's the biggest cost. We need to make sure they're not losing weight. They're not starving. Uh, and we need a, a car that's going to have some fuel in it so they can get to the studies. Many of them already have a car, but they do need accommodation. And so if you're thinking, in your town, we want to send you some young people to come and work in your church. That's the plan. That's why we want a school. Um, how would you accommodate people? If we sent you a couple of young people, how are you going to feed and water them? Uh, that's the sort of thing that I want you to think about. And uh, we have to first convert that building in Wagga, Ian. Bit exciting. You, you care about that building much, Ian? I don't, I don't want to stir the hornet's nest over there. There's a hornet's nest over there, I tell you. We want to use this for God's work. And we have to, I, I say to people, the, the third phase of what I haven't talked about yet, and you're the, you're the group, we have the solid, not fancy, then we go to um, multiplying the workers, and then we're planting churches like you cannot imagine. Because as you drove to this camp, do you know the Adventist church in Jindabyne? Oh, there's not one, sorry. Do you know the Adventist church in Cooma? You all came through Cooma. 
Have you been to the Adventist church there? Oh, there's not one. Oh, maybe someone's going to come riding over the hill and start a church in Cooma. Or maybe it's our responsibility to plant new churches. And it is. So we're not going to stop and making our local churches solid. That's the beginning. Then we're going to multiply the workforce and then we're going to plant churches like Jesus is coming tomorrow. Like we're in a hurry. Like there's urgency in what we do because there's urgency. How many towns did you drive through coming here where there is no Adventist church? Did you drive through any? I mean, you drove through some big towns. We, Canberra is a really underdone city. We don't have anywhere near the churches we should there. But just to have a church in some of these towns, some of them significant towns with no presence, that's our job. No one else, there's not someone coming from America to do it or someone... Uh, from, I don't know, where would they come from, Lynn? I don't know. England. England's in a lot of trouble. Queensland. There's not even, well, hang on. We're Queenslanders, so that's, that's not true. Uh, the, the Queensland is okay. Um, there's no, is there anyone coming from Finland? Well, we want to actually, can I, Kyle, can I tell them about the deal with Finland? You see, did you hear about Finland in church? They'd start in a Bible school. The Finnish church is not in great shape. It's on its, it's, it's got one foot in the grave. And so when they get these young people to train them in vibrant churches, um, you know what they're thinking about doing? Sending them here to do their practical training in South New South Wales. And then we send them back trained to Finland to get on with it. We get the benefit of having them for a year in Dubbo or a year in Wagga or wherever we're sending them. Uh, They get experience with someone that knows how to do this. Then we send them back to Finland because we want a good church in Finland as much as we want one in Canberra. This is God's work and it's his work all over the world. So we're in the process of coordinating that. There's big things and that's why we need accommodation. Please think and pray about how you can contribute to this in this offering that's coming up this coming Sabbath. And if you're just the battler like me um, on the pastor's wage, I can contribute so much a week. I can, I can do that. I wouldn't even notice it. Cost of a pizza. Make a huge difference if we all did that. So we want to do that. We want to grow our tithe base. We want to get the best pastoral team you could possibly imagine and continue to push on with that. But man, we've got to hurry up. Jesus is coming. Let me pray with you. Oh, before I close, sorry. Are there any questions? I always do this. I, I throw all this stuff out and then walk away. Does anyone have any questions how this could impact your church or... No, that's a good sign or a bad sign, Phil. Uh, Here's a question, Russ. Yeah, Russ said there's a bit of a mindset. If we're actively busy, engaged in a program, we're doing mission. And it's true. Does God use programs? Absolutely. I I was once a public evangelist full-time. Do you think I enjoy it? I love it. I've never felt more alive when I'm in danger preaching. I'm in in Mount Hagen in Papua New Guinea, and they were going to shoot me. And they were literally going to shoot me. And it was some of the best five minutes of my life. I preached like I was no tomorrow, literally. And and I actually get off on that. I, I love that. But I come back here to Australia and, uh, and I hire a hall and do the whole thing and my crowd just goes down and down and down and the church is going down with them and I'm like, oh boy, it's hard going here. So what are we going to give up? 
Well, how did Jesus do it? Look at John chapter 1 when he calls his disciples. He networks them. They're all connected. He, he comes along and his cousin, John the Baptist, says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's Andrew and John. He says, Where do you live? Goes home. Andrew then goes to his brother. Who's his, Andrew's brother? Peter. And then they, they find Philip. Where did Philip grow up? The same town as Peter and Andrew. They're all mates from school. And then Philip's mate, Nathaniel, joins. It's a network. That is how it happened in the New Testament. I want to put it to you. That's how we're going to do it today. That's how it's working in these churches, and it is working. Did you hear Griffiths planning a baptism, not at the end of the year, halfway through the year, of 40 souls? Griffith. Do you know the history of Griffith? Have mercy. 40, and that's only halfway through the year. Does that get your blood going? That stirs my soul. I'm supposed to be at another place on that date. It could be here right now, and I'm trying to get out of it because I want to be there. I want to be there to see that. God's at work. God's at work. Let me pray. I'm going to get too stirred up. I won't sleep tonight. Father, It is so exciting to see if we follow the Bible, network the way Jesus did. Just don't rush it, but take our time and set up a multiplication of one trains another, who trains another, who trains another. And before, where there was one, there's 10. Where there was 10, there's 100. Where there was 100, there's 1,000. Father, help us not to get off this but to obey the Bible in our methods and to trust that you'll lead us and that we'll get many more workers and, Lord, that we would become the church planting movement again that started this conference in the first place, that we'd finish your work. Bless us to this and in any way we can contribute to this, Lord, put it on our hearts this week, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. God bless you, and we'll see you at the concert tonight. What time's the concert? Seven. Don't be late. Bring your beanie for your walk back to the tent. <laughs>